Hiya guys and welcome back to Aid's Workshop. So uh, we'll start with viewer mail in this one. Uh, one of my subscribers, a regular viewer and a regular um, patron of the channel, shall we call him, I think, um, Toby7 on YouTube, it's uh, Stephen, has sent me a parcel. He's been to an auction again and he sent me a parcel of goodies. Stephen, thank you so much. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I'll have a quick run through what was in the parcel. Um, oh, yeah. For, well, we start off some various imperial sizes of... Uh, Drill rod, high speed steel, you can never have too much of that. I think the largest one's probably 12 mil. There's one about uh, six, one about five, one about three by the look of it, but great stock. So thank you for those. Um, right, I, t I particularly like this. Old school screwdriver, uh, John Hall tools, um, and warrantied, written on the blade or embossed into the blade. Real old school wooden handle. Um, screwdriver and that'll be a really good bit of steel that um you know properly hardened and tempered and what have you they do not make them there we are you can just about make it out on there john hall tools um yeah that's a vintage piece of vintage screwdriver uh modern day billet screwdriver you can never have too many of those i'm always looking for one um, all screws nowadays seem to be the positive drive or Phillips head and uh, this is the screwdriver uh, They're everywhere. Okay, so you can never have too many uh, a couple of the magnetic inserts with the inserts in them for um, Use in the hand drill, you know in the uh, the older cordless drill, which I use them for um, Again, I'm always looking for these. I was putting them down and losing them. So thanks for those uh, Mechanical version of one of those rather than magnetic tools on one. So yeah uh, again great um, Six mil high speed steel drill saw, um, basically a combination between a drill bit and a roughing milling cutter, shall we call it. Great for like opening holes out on plastics, that sort of thing, you know, where you want to slot a hole and it's nothing fancy. So yeah, handy. Um, it just keeps coming, guys. We haven't got to the good bit yet. Three sets of tweezers. Um, great, again, picking up small items, I do a lot of that. So yeah, fantastic. Three small pin punches. Now, there is a maker's name on them, and I can't make it out without getting a magnifying glass out. But, uh, yeah, three small pin punches. I'm guessing about an eighth. Um, but, yeah, they shall go in the drawer. Couple of small um, collet or T-handle type tap wrenches. Um, a larger and a smaller one, as you can see. There's uh, different sizes in the in the end. So, they'll add to my collection, those. Uh, I'm not sure on a make or what have you. I haven't looked at them that closely they're going to be eclipse or something along those lines i would imagine little spider pickup tool um not for picking up spiders i call it that because it's got like little legs on the end like a spider so you pop it out grab hold of what have you let go and it'll grip it and you can pick things up from down in t-slots or what have you so yeah really useful i'm always dropping things in the t-slot um three little pin chucks um, getting bigger and bigger. This one looks like it'll actually go straight into my, um, it would fit in the collet chuck as an adapter. So I like the uh, little pin chucks. So there's a sort of small, uh, a large medium and a little tiny one, as you can see. So yes, very handy. I do, um, as a part of my other hobby, do a lot of, uh, drilling of very small holes and what have you. So they're going to be useful. So yeah, that one particularly little tiny one there. So that's those. Um, I'll put that to one side for a minute. Uh, Roebuck tap, that's Buck and Hickman. Um, three quarter 24 Whitworth. Um, yeah, useful. I'm not sure if I got one of those. Three quarter, three sixteenths, I was going to say. <laughs> um, yeah, great. There's a milling cutter in here. I'll, I'll come to the milling cutters in a moment. In fact, why not do it? So I'll bring you to this box I've got here. Uh, mounted points, don't use them a great deal, but I will be having a use for them in the future. Um, handful of mount mounted points there, taper cones. What have we got? One, two, three, four, five, two, four, there's six of those. Um, smaller ones. Again, I think we've got six or seven of those, more mounted points. Um, brilliant, you know, they're uh, abrasive points. Oh, in fact, there's a couple more lurking in the box. <laughs> right, I think I'm going to, the easiest way to do this is to point you into the box and you can see what's in here. Well, yeah, it's um, 
Milling cutters. Um, so let's start off. There's a couple of T-slot cutters, various sizes. So there's those two. Um, this box here is mostly full of radius cutters. As you can see from a, a great big hooter. Um, I don't know if my mill would be able to drive that. I think it would be right on my limit, but uh, I think it probably in aluminium I'd get away with it, but not steel. So yeah, that's fantastic. Um, obviously, male ball nose cutters as well. Lots of those. Uh, dropping down into smaller radius cutters. You know, that one's probably, uh, I don't know, probably 10 mil radius, something like that. But yeah, lots of radius cutters, some of them brand new in here. Um, you know, in various guises. Um, in fact, that cutter there, I can feel by the weight of it, is a solid carbide one. Um, so we'll have to we'll have a look at that. This one again, another one. I can feel by the weight of the things that they're uh, they're carbide ones, or certainly good quality ones anyway. So lots of radius cutters. box of slot cutters and end mills again more radius cutters in amongst you all sorts and most of these certainly the radius cutters on the uh, end mills and what have you they're not brand spanking new but they're certainly not chipped or badly worn again another big box full there must be a dozen in there alone various guises and some roughing end mills as well um Again, I don't know how my mill will cope with these, but we'll certainly give it a go. That one's seen better days. Somebody's ground the end of it for a special purpose by the look of it. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's all sorts, lots and lots of milling cutters. And then we go down to some small ones in here as well. So absolutely fantastic, Stephen. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to get some sort of organiser going on for these now. So about 12 months ago, or it could be longer, I was given this chunk of, um, I think it's a form of pot, it's a plastic, um, it's, it was a wear plate of something or other, um, and it's been recycled from a wear plate, and actually looking at it, I think it's uh, from the multiple colours of plastics in it, I believe it's a recycled polypropylene, something like that, um, it's a soft plastic, but it's a nice big thick chunk of it, um, I was looking for a piece of material, and I spotted this on the shelf, which I, I haven't used it before, and I thought, I'll grab a chunk of that, why not, um, you know, chunky pieces of aluminium, you know, I, I, I make a lot of things out of aluminium and what have you, but uh, I thought we'd have a crack with this and see if we can make something useful out of it. So, um, yeah, I'll take you to the mill and show you a bit of drilling and what have you of the part, and I'll reveal what it is. Well, there's the part I was machining in place. Um, the hole up through there, there's two holes in the back. It's a machine block with a hollow in it. There's a hole right down through it and it picks up on one of the existing bolts on the top of the mill. And the idea is that when oh, the mill comes up under power feed, somewhere there, you hear the click, it cuts out. And let me just show you, there's a little bit of room, maybe five mil left on the DRO scale before it tops out and probably about 8 to 10 mil on the ceiling of the shed. So yeah, that's basically to stop me over traveling um, the head. You know, if I turn around or phone rings or something daft like that and I'm under power feed, the feed will go up. Um, I might not be looking at it when I'm feeding up, so it'll cut it out at its top position. I've also got hanging out the back here two spare wires looped on and they're going to be heading off for the interlock I'm going to put on for the brake on the uh, the head so that if, unless I've got the brake released the power feed won't work. So I'll just uh, switch the power on, show it in operation, we'll go down. So there you are, I've got a variable speed on there. So I can go for a dead crawling pace like that. Right. 
right up to fast. Let's put him somewhere near medium. I can reverse direction on here. I've just put it up. So the switch is now up. Switch back on. Up she goes. Let's bring him up somewhere near the switch. If I just uh, show you, you see, it'll stop when it hits the switch. Let's just... Let's slow it down. Here we go. Clunk. And it stopped. Now then, if I just wind off a little bit, it'll break that switch and it'll go back up again. You see? So, reverse direction, come down, and off it'll go in the down direction. Up. And stop again. Perfect. So, at least we've got the limit switch um, to stop over travel going up. I'm going to work on something here, perhaps a block on the side. Um or a sliding stop i might have a little block on here and a sliding stop here um so that i can set a bottom stop i might have an absolute position where it can't go any lower but um there's no, it, the bottom position of stop depends on what cutter you've got in i'll probably set it up so that this um basically so that perhaps we get about 50 mil below the bottom of the quill when the quill is right up um so that I can get as much travel as I need out of it. And I'll have a moving stop down here that'll push on a block similar to the top. But at least I'll be able to adjust it to come to a stop if I'm boring to a depth or things like that. I've been asked to put a link up to the enclosure that I use. So I'll put a link in the description of this video. And I dis did miss the link to the belts that I've used. Same gears and same belts for the X and Y axis. Uh, X and Z axis, I should say. Um, but I haven't put a link up to the belt, so I'll also put a link into the belt size that I used in the description. So we need to start finding homes for all these new bits and pieces. Um, yeah, the little Whitworth tap goes in there. And they've got the little two tap wrenches in there with the other tap wrenches. All sorts of taps and dies in here, all in one box. So that's that. That's a home for those. Well, I'm at it. That silver stool can go in that drawer. And I did pull out. We were talking about small drill bits for the little pin chucks. Can you even see it? I don't know. Let me get round the other side of the camera. Um, smallest drill bit I've got. And that is uh, 16 thou. They're, um, once I go under a millimetre, they all seem to be imperial. Um, 16 thousandths of an inch drill. Um, without the magnifying glass or a loop in, I got a job to see it myself. But yeah, that's uh, that's mighty small. Apologies for the uh, dangling camera charger lead there. <laughs> right, uh, little pin chucks. They're going to go in this box. And I've got room in this drawer. And they will go in there. That's, in fact, there's more room in there than I thought I had. Um, yeah, I mean, these drawers do get quite full quite quickly. Um, you know, all sorts of useful stuff going on in all these drawers, as you can see. Last week's video, I showed my clunker watch, uh, my G-Shock, Casio G-Shock um, watch, and it seemed to go down quite well. I mean, I've probably, well, I've said many times on the channel, I've got quite an interest in watches, and I like to fiddle with them and repair them and what have you, but only on a very low scale. I certainly wouldn't call myself a watchmaker by any stretch of the imagination. I'm a watch fiddler. Um, yeah, but I do like to collect watches, and I'll show you today's offering, um, as last week's went down well. Um, I've had this a few months. Um, I've just realised the date is wrong, but the day is correct. So yeah, um, Seiko SKX. Um, this one's had a few modifications. Got a different bezel, different hands, and a different face on it to the original. Um, the, you know, it's very similar to what would be on there originally. Um, the bezel is obviously it's fifty-fifty Pepsi bezel, as they call it, the blue and uh, red. Um, a normal Seiko one would, I believe, 15 minutes of bread on a normal one. But yeah, um, slightly different face and what have you. It's an automatic watch, um, mechanical movement. Seiko SKX, it's the 007 version. Nothing to do with James Bond. Um, God bless Sean Connery, we've just lost him. Must have been the greatest Bond ever in my mind, but that's another story. So yeah, as a watch collector, on a budget, 
it's a nice watch. It's not a clunk. Well, it's a sports watch. You could use it every day, do whatever you want with it. Um, you know, it's waterproof 200 meters, I believe, or water resistant, they call it. But uh, I'm certainly not going to go 200 meters, that's for sure. Maybe I'll drop it 200 meters and it'll be still working, but uh, I won't be able to get it back. So, yeah, that's the Seiko SKX. And um, it's, as a watch collector, that's on a budget. That's a nice. Um, addition to my collection I've had it a few months and I've been looking out for one for quite some time time I wanted one that was in good nick so this has had um, work done on it with the pace um, the, the bezel as they say the hands have been changed and I've fitted a new Seiko strap on it as well um, it was on a rubber band before which I don't like um, they do make my hands sweat um, on the rubberized ones the uh, plastic one that's on the clunker that I've got doesn't but the rubberized band sometimes make my arms wet so yeah I like the bracelet type uh, more in keeping with this watch as it is so that's a Seiko SKX okay well I'm gonna cut it there um, I've put up some quite long videos lately I think the last one was 40 odd minutes and you can imagine how long it takes to edit and what have you so this one's going to be a bit shorter um, not a lot of machining in it but as you can see the project for the powering of the axes on the mill is coming along um, toying with doing the y-axis now that I've got x and z done but uh, I'm probably not going to do it but I may fit a power on the quill uh, I was talking last episode about using the head power feed you know up and down perhaps the boring you know that sort of thing probably not the best way to do it with sort of movement in the head and what have you I think the quill with its uh, has got a more accurate linear direction then so I think I might put the power feed on the quill but have a changeover switch so I can use the same control system the same electrics the whole lot basically it disconnects the four wires from the motor on the head and changes them over to the motor on the um, on the quill I could use a smaller motor as well I believe on there because it's, it's very light um, compared to having to crank the head up and down the uh, winding the quill on the little handle is is quite a light duty thing so I think a little a smaller motor maybe a NEMA 23 something like that a um, little short one not going to get in the way too much I think might be the way forward for that so yeah it's it's an idea but um, I think I'm going to update and upgrade the power feed on the lathe now to um, this system because the one on the lathe as you've all probably seen makes a hell of a racket with its gearbox and what have you but these little uh, stepper motors you know they're virtually silent um, you know it doesn't detract on camera whereas the one on the lathe yeah it makes a racket the one I've got on there so uh, we'll move forward and probably do that next I'll have to get another power supply but uh, no great shakes in not stupid money um, and I'll fit another box on the wall and remove what I've got I might even get it in the existing box you never know so I've rabbited on long enough guys as usual thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and it's my birthday tomorrow so I'm off for a pint happy days cheers now